Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on chess or whatever. First, I wanted to thank you for the incredibly positive feedback. It really means a lot to me and really motivates me to keep on making these videos for you. Today's game is a little bit short, but what it lacks in length, it really makes up in complicated positions. Just like my day. Weird, somehow the recording stopped. Anyways, the game is played between Mikhail Tal and Alexei Suetin. I really hope I pronounced this correctly. The story behind this game is pretty interesting. As some of you probably know, Mikhail Tal had a lot of health problems in his life. Just a month before this game was played, he had to have his kidney removed. The doctor said this should have been done already two to three years ago, so he was really suffering from his bad kidney. After the operation, however, some Yugoslavian newspaper reported that he died in the operation. Imagine feeling better than ever because your kidney's finally gone, and you read in the newspaper that you're dead. You are fake news. So some of his friends were actually concerned. Because back at that time, fake news couldn't just be corrected within a day or two by updating the website or something like that. You couldn't just Google if Mikhail Tal actually was dead. If a newspaper reported that someone was dead, someone was probably dead, yeah? So Tal put his friends at ease by contacting them and telling them that the rumors of his death were greatly exaggerated. <laughs> what a great way to tell someone that you're not actually died. So now let's look at the game of the supposedly dead man. Tal played e4 and his opponent responded with c5. This is still in defense. We have knight to f3 and e6, the French variation. Not the French defense, but the French variation of the Sicilian defense. But it transposes later into another opening. Tal uh, plays d4, very standard stuff. And of course, uh, Suetin takes the pawn. Knight takes the pawn and we have a6. Now we are in the Sicilian Khan variation. Tal develops his bishop, Suetin develops the knight, Tal develops his other knight, and Suetin de develops his other knight. Now, this knight is attacked and unprotected. In most Sicilians, you don't really want to take the knight, because it just helps black's position. Now, in this Sicilian, you could actually take it, but just to show you, most of the time, you don't want to give black all of those center pawns, or pawns that could potentially control the center, when you only have one pawn that could potentially control the center. So Tal didn't trade, but played the knight back to b3. Very standard stuff. Suetin develops his knight further, and we have castles. Now Suetin plays b5, getting more space on the queen side. b5, as it is, isn't a bad move. It's actually pretty good. The problem only arises later. Tal develops his bishop, and we have d6. The problem is, if you play Mikhail Tal, you don't want to keep your king in the center too long. Black wasted a lot of moves with just pawn moves. We had c5, e6, afterwards it was uh, a6, then b5, and now d6. So black did a lot of pawn moves, meanwhile white developed, castled the king, and is actually ready to attack. And Tal realizes that, he plays f4. And if you're in a game and you're not castled and not really developed, and Tal has, has developed all of his minor pieces and plays f4, you're already in a bit of trouble. Now the computer still thinks that this is roughly equal, but white is better, but it's not looking that great al already. So black finally develops another piece and is ready to castle. Get the king off the center, very sensible stuff, but Tal plays queen to h5. And again, if you're playing me, you would probably castle. And the computer says you should castle. But if Tal puts the queen directly in front of the side you want to castle, and has all those pieces ready to attack on that side, you get a little hesitant, you know? It's like, mm, should I really castle? I'm playing Tal. So black didn't castle, although castling would have been the best move. Black moved his bishop to f6. I don't really understand the logic behind that move. Now, I understand the reason, because black will show it to us afterwards, after rook to d1, he trades off the knight. But why? Alright, you're getting attacked, you want to exchange pieces so the attack gets less strong. But if we look at this, the bishop here is actually uh, not a bad defending piece. It controls a lot of squares, or at least semi a lot of squares. Uh, actually, together with the knight, it coordinates quite good. And if we have a look at that knight, that knight isn't attacking. It can't really get into the attack anytime soon. So black wastes a full move, moving the bishop, 
and then takes the knight. Meanwhile, white developed another piece. Yeah, he put a rook on the semi-open file. It's black's move again, and black moves the queen to c7. The rook goes up to d2, preparing to double up. Tal doesn't know how exactly he wants to double up. Maybe he wants to go to f2, but also maybe he wants to double up on the d file. So this move rook to d1 is pretty flexible. We have knight back to e7, getting another piece to defend, and knight to d4. Now the other knight is actually starting to attack. The bishop is getting developed, and now black is ready to castle queenside. Of course, Mikhail Tal doesn't want his opponent to castle, he wants the king to be stuck in the center. So he starts to explode the center with f5. Black has to respond to this threat, and it takes on f5. We have e takes f, and the knight moves. And here Tal already plays a very funny looking interesting move. He plays knight to e6. Knight to e6 looks like a sacrifice, but actually isn't one. Because you can take with the pawn, because the queen pins the pawn to the king. Now, knight to f6, uh, knight to e6 threatens a lot of stuff. First of all, you threaten this pawn with check, and you threaten the queen. You can't really do anything against both of the threats, so black just takes it. Now white takes back, if we look at this position now, it doesn't look very nice for black. Black's king is still stuck in the center, and his pieces aren't really doing anything. I mean, those two rooks are just doing absolutely nothing. The knights are pretty good, but uh, white is just crushing. The threat is to take here with check, and then you're just one square away from queening. Not optimal, okay? Now, black should absolutely castle queenside here. Get your king out of the center and into safety. Yes, white can still take this, but you could probably stop the pawn with that. Don't get me wrong, white is still much, much better, the king still isn't safe, and those two rooks are terrible compared to those two rooks, which are very good, and now you could actually double up, for example. Black didn't castle queenside, he played g6 attacking the queen. And this, in itself, is a really bad move. Even if there was no crushing tactic here, it would still be, at the very core, a bad move. Now, why is this such a bad move? Why am I saying this? Imagine you are on the Titanic, and the water starts crashing in from the side. Everyone's panicking, running around, they just want to get out, get on the lifeboats. And you are sitting there, and you're like, no worry guys, you pull out a straw, and you start sucking up the water. You will still die. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you can, the water starts crashing in. You can't do anything with, with your straw. Even if I gave you a bucket and you started sh shoving it out, it won't help. And this is exa exactly what black does here. Yeah, y you have a queen that's attacking. All right, this square is very weak. So let me protect the square and attack the queen. But you're getting, you're getting attacked everywhere. Just a simple move like I still take, and uh, you take back, and queen g4, I'm still crushing. Now you can't castle, for example, because of two reasons. Because first of all, you would land in check, and second of all, your knight is hanging. So Suetin focuses on the small problems instead of the big problems. Just like when he traded off the bishop before. You shouldn't focus on this one single knight, you should focus on your piece being a defending piece in general, controlling squares. Now, I have easy talking, I mean, those guys are grandmasters, Sweet Team would crush me every day of the week, but, you know. So Tal said, if you're trying to save the Titanic with a straw, I will take another iceberg and hit you in the face with it. Queen takes knight. And, of course, Black has to take the knight, I mean, if your opponent sacks his queen like this, you gotta take it. The problem is, before the f7 square was protected by this knight. Now, Tal removed the knight, so the f7 square is protected by no one. And on this position, I had so much fun with the analysis board. I can't remember the last time where I had such a blast analyzing positions. I'm only showing you very few of the variations I calculated with the help of the computer, because this position is just so rich in incredible tactics. First of all, black resigned. <laughs> yeah? So white sacrifices the queen, black takes it, one more move with check, black resigns. He's like, you know what, no, fuck that. I don't want to do that. 21 moves is enough, I don't want to suffer the whole thing with... Uh,
the whole thing against Tal, despite being up five full points of material. Yeah, almost like a complete rook. Why did Black resign? First of all, the king only has three moves. Let's say you go here, which is the easiest one. It's white to move and mate in one. You can pause the video if you want to. That should have been enough time. It's bishop to h6. It's check. The king can't move here or there because of the pawn. You can't take the pawn because of the rook. You can't take the bishop. You can't put anything in between. It's checkmate. Now, if you move here, I push the pawn and make a queen. Of course, you have to take the queen with the rook because otherwise I'm just up a piece. Yeah, if you go here, then I just got my queen back and you're still getting attacked and you're just getting mated in a few moves. So if you take the queen, I of course take it, check. You have to move out of the way. Now I take the other rook, no one was defending that rook. And it's really hard to move here as black. If you just waste a move, I win your queen like this. By the way, now I am up in material. I have two rooks for the queen. We both have a minor piece. And I just have a bishop, Yeah, just a bishop plus. If you just waste a move, I go here and I win your queen. That's not looking good. Now, if you go here, for example, I take with check and I just grovel up all of the pawns. I'm still attacking and you will lose your queen at one point. You will lose all your pieces at one point. The computer is giving the evaluation of plus 14 and it actually thinks you should just sacrifice the queen and be done with it. So let's go back a few moves. Uh, and we were here at the crossroads. So you can't go here, you can't go here. Let's look at the most interesting variation. The computer suggests that the king should move up to d7. And here you have an incredible move. You can pause the video and see if you find it. It's actually quite obvious. It's bishop to f5, discovered double check. The king only has one legal move. You move back the bishop to e4, and now black only has one legal move again which is to sacrifice the knight, and it's a really involuntarily sacrifice. You put it here, and I just chop it away with check again. Now black opened up more moves for himself, because before these were protected by the rook, but now my bishop is in the way again, so you still can go to one of these squares. If you go back to d7, I take the rook with check. You can't even take back because it's discovered check again. You have to move the king out of the way, and I promote my pawn, but I don't make a queen, I under-promote to a knight. The king only has one legal square to go if you don't take the knight, which would be here. And now it's made in three for black. Can you see it? It starts with bishop to g5. Black only has one legal move, and now you play bishop to c6 check. If the queen takes, we have Rook to d8, checkmate. The rook is protected by the bishop, and this rook protects this file. If you don't take, we have an even more beautiful checkmate. The queen has to move in between, and I take the queen with checkmate. The knight protects the bishop, the rook protects the knight, and the bishop protects these files. Beautiful! Magnificent! Now if you take the knight, I take the rook, and now I'm just up two full pieces because I have two rooks for the queen that I sacrificed and just two extra bishop. And this is just crushing for white. If we just go and play a few more moves, maybe the queen is moving there. That's by the way the best computer move. Best computer move is to, to move the queen here and you just win the queen and even the computer is just like giving up. Like, all right, like, you beat me, just take all my pieces and mate me. So an incredible game played by Mikhail Tal. If we go back to the final position, which is a bunch of moves ago, I just realized. At this point, where White sacrificed his queen, one of the audience members actually exclaimed, not bad for a dead man, don't you think? So that's already it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quite short game. I had a blast analyzing it. If you want to see more games like this, like and subscribe and leave a comment, tell your dog, make a lot of social media posts about me. And otherwise, I'll hopefully see you next week with another video on chess or whatever.